hello guys welcome to my second tutorial for doctrine and twig in this video we'll be starting off from where we left off in our first video first we'll set up the pagination we already have the data passed into the twig while rendering it so we can make use of these data in the twig for making the pagination work first we can check whether the total number of pages is greater than zero if it is less than zero the pagination strip need not be shown so we can make that in a if condition clause. After that we can set up the buttons for the pagination including the previous next and all the page number buttons. For that we can start with a for loop. The for loop format for Twig programming is for i in one dot dot total underscore pages that is initial variable dot dot final variable. We should also give an end for tag. There are some pretty useful stuff for f using for loop in twig like uh, the loop index so instead of checking the value of i we can directly use variables like loop dot first inside a loop for checking whether the loop is in its first iteration we can use a loop dot first function and for checking whether it is in the last iteration we can use a loop dot last so these two functions can be used to add the previous and next button now we might need a variable to keep track of the current page that is being shown so we can add a variable called current underscore page and set its initial value as 1 we should also pass that to the twig variable so now we can use the variable in the twig here now we can add it if condition to check whether the current page is equal to the page number here so we'll be just using one for now so if the current page is equal to one we can add a class as disabled so this is a pretty useful sub stuff in twig so we are actually dynamically adding a class to the list item based on our condition and if the current page is equal to the total pages we can also disable the next button Similarly, we can also disable the previous button if the current page is equal to 1, that is the first page. Now we can start setting up the page number button. For that, uh, we can remove the first three buttons. So, the button number can be identified from the loop index. Also, if the list item is active, that particular button will be disabled so we can add the active class only if the current page is same as a loop index that is if we are viewing a particular page that particular page number should be the active one so if current page is equal to the loop index that page will be in the active state the page number button will be in the active state we can also give the href path to the button that is the same path as for this page itself we will be adding a variable to that as page so when we click that button it will be redirected to a page as we can see now so now it is being redirected to the same page with the page number in the get variable so now we can check whether there is any page number in the action of our controller so we can get the page number from the request object we need not check whether the request object is get or post now actually we are receiving the page variable from the get object now we can add some basic validation for the page number variable so that we don't end up in the wrong page first we can check whether the total count of rows is less than the count per page so in that case the page n total number of pages will be one so the page number will be always one now we need to add a condition to make sure that the page number is an integer variable so we can use the is numeric function and uh, in case if it is some decimal value we can 
floor it to the nearest integer using the floor function. Now we can check whether the, the page number does not exceed the total number of pages. For that we can check whether the current page into the count per page does not exceed the total number of rows. So if it exceeds the total number of rows we can set the page number as the maximum page number that is the last page number. So that will be total count divided by the count or we can we have already used that in another variable total underscore pages so we can just set that page number as the total pages so now we won't be needing the current page variable which we had initially set so we can remove that so now we can start setting up the database query so we have some function like setting an offset setting the maximum number of results etc for a doctrine query so using that we can get the rows required for a specific page so we'll use the set first result function and give an offset variable to it the offset variable can be defined based on the page number we can initialize that to zero and if the page number is set and is greater than 1 the value of the offset will be count per page into current page minus 1 that is the starting of the first page the row that starts the first the current page should be set as the offset so that value will be count per page into current page minus 1 mm. now we can pass the page variable to the tweak two. So that will be it. Now we can test what we have done. So there will be five pages and all the page number buttons are working too. Now all that is required to do is display the data properly in the tweak which I'll be explaining in my next video. Thank you guys for watching this video. Have a nice day.